Hello everyone, uh, this video is about my Sony PSX800 Tonearm High Performance Energy Damper. This is a damper that bolts on to the rear here um, of the uh, what's called the reinforcement. And um, I'll just take it off to start off with. And um, this is a uh, bare Sony PSX800 Tonearm. Okay, with all the parts removed from it. And the reason why we're doing it that way is it makes this demonstration much easier to follow and uh, much clearer for you to hear the differences. So um, let's go over some of the, the parts of this tone arm assembly, what's left of it here. Um, this is called the neck cylinder connector, uh, this whole assembly here where these two screws uh, attach it to the pipe. And that's uh, what you connect your universal head shell to. This is the pipe, this is the arm base, and this is called the reinforcement. These, th these are the official terms used in the Sony service manual, so we'll use those terms whether we agree with them or not. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, uh, is we're going we're gonna to raise this tone arm above uh, the surface of this towel, and uh, we're going to hit it with a mechanical impulse via a wooden dowel. Okay? And uh, we're going to listen to the natural resonant characteristics of this tone arm assembly. And then we're going to install uh, my damper. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, hear the differences. And the differences are quite profound, actually. Uh, this is one of the most effective products that I've ever invented on any of my SLT turntable aftermarket parts. Anyway, let's get on with this. Um, we're going to raise this tone arm. Okay. And we're going to uh, give it a mechanical uh, impulse here. And we're going to listen to the natural resonant characteristics of this tone arm assembly. By the way, all these screws are tight. Everything's tight. And this is a valid test. Um, I'm going to uh, both raise it above and slightly touch the towel. And the reason why is is that if I, I would like to do this test raised above, but as you can see, this toner assembly wants to spin around everywhere, and when I hit it, it really goes bananas. So the only way to stabilize it is to just barely let it contact the towel, which doesn't make any difference to the validity of this test, as you will see here. Okay, this is touching the towel. This is raised from the towel. Touching the towel, raised. You should be able to hear no difference there. If, if you are hearing a difference, it's so slight, it's, it's inconsequential for this particular demonstration. Okay, and so for the duration of this uh, uh, demonstration, I am going to leave it just slightly touching the towel, okay? Again, above the towel, on the towel, okay? And, um, and the reason why we're doing that is to stabilize this assembly so it's not spinning around and uh, making the video miserable to watch. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to try and memorize the, the sound of this natural resonant signature of this tone arm assembly uh, without my damper installed. So try your best to memorize the sound. As you can hear, this thing rings like a bell, all right? And uh, I'm going to focus most of my impulse testing on the lower surface here, okay? Not the upper surface or anywhere else. Be why? Because this lower surface is the most resonant part of this tone arm assembly, of the arm base more exactly. Okay, now we're gonna install my damper And these dampers are supposed to only just barely be tight. You don't cinch it down with, at the end from the hex key or anything like that. Just barely tight. 
and you want to even feel a little bit of wobble here. It just should barely contact this reinforcement uh, steel bracket at the back where you normally connect your um, supplemental counterweights <clears throat> if you need them anyway. Okay, and here's the test again. Just barely touching the towel. And that's raised from the towel. This is why I use the towel as a support to keep it from swinging around. Barely touching the towel. By the way, if you can't see, I'm hitting the arm pipe, the actual pipe itself. Now, I don't know what you're hearing at your end, but I can tell you at this end, there's a dramatic difference. And just to uh, prove it once again, um, I will remove this and repeat the test. Rings like a bell. All right. I don't know how else to uh, prove to you that the damper makes a significant difference and is a very cost-effective modification. Um, you're probably wondering. You're probably wondering why I'm not discussing the actual damper or showing close-ups of it or anything like that. It's because it's my own proprietary design and I simply don't want to, uh, I'm not interested in, in, in discussing uh, the details of it. I, I discuss everything I can discuss on my web store ad for this damper and uh, I simply am just not going to go any further. It's not an overpriced snake oil product. It uh, does what I say it does and um, but by the same token I, I'm just simply not going to reveal all the details about it um, it's it's just the way uh, um, it should be done and um, so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video uh, I do think I'm going to be making a future video about my uh, all the different modifications that I'm going to be offering on the Sony PSX800 tone arm and, uh, you know, that's going to be a modification and blueprint service. And um, I'm doing one right now. And um, it's going to result in a significant improvement in sound to the Sony PSX-800 to a turntable that's already performing very well and it's got a, a lot of respect in the market. So um, I'm pretty um, excited about what I'm going to be doing here. And, uh, and I don't see any reason why you guys wouldn't uh, be excited as well. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed this.